Very good evening to all my dear friends and juniors who have joined here for this wonderful session. As a founder of Medusim, it fills me immense joy and pride to welcome you all for the today's session, Trump Card for Success 2.2, Mastering the First Milestone, Grace Anatomy, unveiled by our esteemed faculty, Dr. Raj Kohila, ma'am. Before we dwell into the enriching insights from ma'am, I would like to share with you all a moment to reflect our wonderful journey of Medusin and its contribution to the medical students over the past few years. Medusin Academic Forum has been a beacon of light for medical students, making academics not only easy but also interesting. Through this platform, we have facilitated access to quality education and fostered a sense of community among medicos worldwide. Though we stand proud having completed around 250 lectures by various faculty, it is a testament to our commitment to academic excellence. At this point of time, I would like to uh, show my wonderful and heartfelt gratitude to all the faculties who have generously volunteered their time and expertise. In particular, I would like to highlight the remarkable contribution of Dr. Raj Kohila, ma'am, Assistant Professor from Department of Anatomy at Madurai Medical College and Hospital. Dr. Raj Kohila, ma'am, has been an integral part of our team for the past four years. Our dedication to the growth of our forum and as well as her unwavering support to the student had been a truly commendable. Further, she has dedicated uh, far beyond the confines of our virtual classroom. She has consistently demonstrated a deep commitment to the holistic development of our student, advocating for their well-being and fostering a nurturing environment. If you had seen uh, in the WhatsApp groups as well as the previous year, if you have just seen your, asked your juniors, asked your seniors, you would know how she had been not just an anatomy faculty, but she has been just an inspiration to everyone. She has shown how to read a subject, how to understand a subject. Moreover, she acted as a personal mentor and guide for various students. As we embark on this session today, let us not only absorb the academic insights, but also reflect the value she embodied. Let her example inspire us to approach our study with a renewed vigor and determination. Together, let us seize this opportunity to learn, grow and forge ahead. Once again, I would like to extend my warm welcome to each and everyone. Uh, those who are LRM Tamil mostly, I think you would have you will be understanding. So more, more probably what is that is uh, we will be like not just uh, this is not going to be just an end. This session is going to be just a beginning. We are going to have lots and lots of session from ma'am. Uh, in spite of our busy schedule, she has just took a session in uh, Chetinad Medical College yesterday. And uh, previously, she is taking class in various, various institutes. And even the, in spite of that, she is with us today to share our knowledge, to share our uh, advice and uh, to everyone. So I would like to uh, advise everyone of you here to just listen to her and uh, march towards your success. So thank you so much, ma'am, for joining with us today. Now I'd like to hand over the session to you, ma'am. A very good evening to one and all. Yes, thank you, Raghu and Medicine team for giving me this opportunity. Like we have been traveling together for past four years and it has been a very, I think, uh, useful for both of us and for these students on the whole. Like uh, this session, uh, I think uh, previously we have done similar two sessions and uh, like uh, I think the audience are from first year MBBS students, right? Okay, so the Google form that we have given you and you have filled, like they have got, the entire team has gone through all your responses, okay? So the entire session has been designed to meet your queries, your grievances, your response. Okay, so every one of your response has been recorded, gone through. And the medicine team and myself have put efforts to uh, like address your needs. And uh, yeah, so in case if you think any of your particular query is not being addressed in this session, which might be for the next 30 to 40 minutes, you can always approach the medicine team and medicine is going to be with you. Raghu and medicine, they're going to travel with you, not only in your first year MBBS, but throughout your profession journey, right? It will be a mentoring part from their uh, side. And I'm also available for you, for your first year MBBS, for your university exams. You can always bounce back to me when you need me, right? So first of all, to start with, yeah, congratulations to each one of you. And uh, yes, so 
yeah you're yeah, like uh, not everyone who aspires or perspire to become uh, to want to become a medical they get a medical seat but yes you're being very fortunate you're being very blessed to get a seat a mbbs seat in one of the colleges in tamil nadu in any part of india and one question that i would like to ask you at the beginning of this session so during your school days okay and during your neat ug preparation the amount of hard work and dedication the consistency that you put are you putting it every day during your course now are you putting it daily are you trying to put it yeah are you the same person who was there in the school days or during your neat ug preparation is that the same you during your college days also yeah so where is the gap that you want to fill in yes yeah i don't know what the image is about okay so actually i put the name of all the 19 subjects here yes so for your the screen yeah so the name of the 19 subjects is actually displayed here it's, it's sort of got distorted yes of course it's not about in, in first year mbbs you come across anatomy physiology biochem right so it's not a, like a, a debate or something which one is more important which one is less important all the subjects that you come across during your undergraduate course i think totally around 19 of them each one of them is really 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 important a basic understanding of all the subjects is very essential you can't tell the subject is very easy or least important everything is important everything is significant everything you're going to have a test and your neat pg or next exam you're going to get going to get questions from all these 19 subjects okay so do not neglect any subject as such and of course apart from your theory practicals all the competitive exams you are in first mbbs and most of you who are attending this session might be the first graduate in your family the first doctor in your family with lot of responsibilities and only for you you are a first mbbs student but in your home in your neighborhood when you go to a function or something they consider you as a doctor doesn't mind whether in the you are in the first year or first clinical or final year to you to them you are already a doctor right yeah <laughs> yes you might already be getting a ct mri x rays blood investigations your relatives might be asking you to uh, explain or diagnose or help them in their management so you have started to feel a responsibility in your shoulder am i right okay yeah so uh, you're not it's not just about your passing your first mbbs you're completing your mbbs you're going to enter you're going to enter a specialty course isn't it you want to specialize in a medicine surgery pediatrics ortho or something definitely you have to undergo another entrance examination it could be a neat pg or inict or a next examination so it's not about theory alone you're going to face a lot of practical examinations okay you're going to be bombarded with questions in your viva sessions everything so you should be mentally prepared for not only your theory exams but also for your practical exams and you know like yes you have chosen this profession yes you have been crowned with this profession and no turning back no regrets okay yeah you'd be happy you have chosen the right field the right profession of what has been okay so no regrets why did i take this why did i why did i know no turning back right you accept it this is your profession and you're going to shine excel in this profession okay just accept and let's move forward together yeah now taking the responsibilities so one question i already asked you are you the same as in your school days or in your neat ug preparation the amount of hard work dedication that you put in those days is it equally doing now are you doing it now the second question what do you want what is that you want like just passing in your exams uh internal assessment pass fail or university exam pass fail okay is that alone enough for you or there's something more than that right yeah uh yes people they after their exam once the result come they call they call back and they tell ma'am i scored honors i scored distinction it's very nice to hear those terms yes so it's just it's not just pass or fail like each one of you can aim for a honors distinction is yes, of course you can you can just you think aim for it 
and not only that our mgr university has been giving medals for the toppers yeah in each subject ent of tal medicine surgery you're given a university medal yes your hard work is going to be re recognized by the medical fraternity of the state okay so none of your hard work is going to be hidden everything is going to be rewarded so pass fail is not the matter aim for honors distinction aim for medal you can be the best topper you can be a topper of the subject you can be topper of your college you can be the topper of the university right they tell aim for the stars right so aim high keep your ambitions high yes uh yes probably when you come to your final years you might be you might be might definitely might be appearing for the next pattern of examination yes so which is more of an integrated integrated approach yeah so the questions are going to be similar to your usmle plab sort of thing and it's going to be very much integrated that's why even in your internal assessment in your first time bbs anat with your biochem you might have appreciated the essay that you got you keep getting now okay it's all a clinical scenario question am i right so the question is not going to be write a say on the shoulder joint give it uh, the articular surfaces ligaments of the joint blood supply nerve supply which was used to be before okay uh, with the cbme batch the question paper pattern has been totally uh, modified the essay is going to be a clinical scenario and recently right a pharmacology or something right i don't know even the short answers were like clinical scenarios okay and the purpose is integration integration so anat anatomy like everything surgery ent ophthal og peds whatever you take anatomy can be integrated so integration is the key word now you should be able to correlate it right yeah so some of you might be planning for doing your pg post graduation abroad usmle or you want to do a plab yes those questions are also integrated questions yes and uh, yeah you you have to if you're very much focused on these then better you start your preparation in your first clinical itself okay and it's not only usmle or plab or entering or you're doing your uh, phd post graduation there's something else right you can do your civil service also there are many doctors after mbbs if you're focused they're directly joining this and going yeah they are achieving it okay so each one's ambitions aim focus can be different but work for it aim think okay yeah so it's not only about theory and viva uh, your cbme pattern is such that your procedural skills is going to be assessed right now you give a intramuscular injection skill labs are like every department every college are coming up with skill labs okay so during your internship or during those postings you'll be tested on performance of those skills as you see here this is your yeah so this is a lumbar puncture yes you will be asked to assess surgeries right and uh, your intercostal drainage you will be asked to interpret uh, radiological images ct mri conducting deliveries right so your procedural skills everything is going to be assessed you should be mentally prepared for it okay now coming to anatomy first mbbs as such that to read anatomy i think it's been months you have entered into anatomy so you would have all got your textbooks yes and you know you know very well familiar with the name of the textbooks you have textbooks for anatomy by indian authors and by foreign authors and one thing must they tell you to read in dissection hall is your cunningham's apart from that whatever ug textbook you get the content is going to be similar every book you take axillary nerve and read what is it they are going to talk about it axillary nerves from the posterior cord it's going to supply the two muscles deltoid and teres minor the content is going to be the same but the way it has been produced might differ from textbook depending upon the author's perspective okay so it doesn't make a big difference which book you choose your friends might be having another textbook you can share the information which is not available in the other with the other okay to top it 
well and good or you if you go to a library they might give you seminars to present right they might give you some topics to read and come for presentation when you want to topic you want to get additional information like there are few books which can be available in the library you can have a soft copy of it definitely be of great help students anatomy grace anatomy for students which has nice illustrations clinical scenarios yeah Uh, these books and this Gray's Anatomy we called as the Bible for anatomists. So how is this Gray's Anatomy going to differ from the rest of the textbooks? Right. So all of you might be dissecting, and in your dissection hall, like in other tables or in in your own table, you might be come across you might be coming across a lot of variations. Yes, variation in the branching of an artery, in the course of a nerve, in the attachment of a muscle. Okay, so these might not might not be of much importance to you, but for those who are on the clinical side, ah, uh, like individual to individual variations are common, right? So these variations become very important, and research articles, ah, research is done on that. So the Gray's Anatomy, which we call as Bible, right? That has the recent updates on these research activities, which will be of very much helpful to the clinicians and for the postgraduate students of anatomy. Okay. and the other textbooks when you want to prepare for a quiz you are attending on some other intra college or inter college quiz when you want to top up something important or uh, when you especially abroad okay abroad there is chaurasia everything but uh, in their routine uh, uh, yeah schedule they follow certain textbooks of which one is very important very interesting very useful and i love is this snell yes snell's clinical anatomy is very 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 mm, like very easy it gives a i to i told you right depending upon the author's perspective nell's clinical anatomy is really an excellent textbook especially neuroanatomy if you want to read if you have enough time when you want to prepare for your pg or for your quiz or for some integrated topics right uh, snell is very important and this book by moore kethel moore yeah that is also very uh, nice book and certain things that you find there it will not be given elsewhere so keith uh, this kethel moore and snell are the textbooks followed by uh, foreign medical graduates abroad they use these texts okay and coming to atlas the one thing that i very much admire right is netter's atlas why are these atlases needed some people have visual memory and uh, like uh, relations relations especially in abdomen head and neck when you want to see those relations okay it gives a very 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 nice images netters even one or two people in your dissection table you have it you can take it to your table show it to your friends because it's a bit costly so not everyone can afford it but if you go to a library just go through it at least for abdomen and head and neck topics okay netters atlas grants atlas of dissection anatomy that's also very nice you can go through it and of course some people no they don't buy the textbook also for embryology and histology i it like one uh, neglected portion of anatomy embryology and histology okay but definitely i'll tell you embryology and histology are very important definitely you are going to get mcqs on those a five mark is going to come it could be a part of your essay question so if you if you decide to keep it aside to read it at the last minute then you're going to miss something okay you can carry your embryology along with your gross anatomy topics while you're doing abdomen you can read embryology of abdomen thorax heart development head and neck development of face palate everything and the number of questions which have been asked in embryology in your university exam is usually repeated okay and for mcqs it's mainly derivatives they keep asking about the derivatives of notochord derivatives of neural crest derivatives of what are the mesoderms you have the paraxial mesoderm intermediate mesoderm lateral plate mesoderm derivatives of endoderm ectoderm mesonephric duct para mesonephric duct so embryology is all about derivatives so you should you know it is going to be asked right you know the question prior so you can have it at the tip of your fingers and it's again repeated for your uh, neat pg entrance examination also these questions so please do not keep your embryology histology for the last minute 
find time to read it the important questions in these topics are going to be limited so mark it read it okay histology and this manual is really a blessing to the undergraduate students there are many textbooks for histology it will be nice if you could read them okay so yeah and uh, this histology by at least you have histology for your theory where you're supposed to draw a neat diagram a label diagram using hematoxylin you have a practical record and for your practical examination, you have a spotter, right? Spotter, you have to identify. And the slide, discussion slide is also that general histology and systemic histology. So histology, it carries a, a good proportion of marks in both your theory and practical examination. So in this manual, you have a nice schematic diagram and points are given, isn't it? So if you could manage to remember minimum of five points, that will save you, okay? So you will not be blank. You will not be like, a, 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 like you won't be dumbfounded. You will be able to answer something, at least minimum of five points for each, each, each uh, histology slide, okay? Please do not neglect your embryology and histology. Then, Apart from the textbook, apart from the atlases, for those who are really interested in something, and as I told you, you were given some topic to present on a seminar or something. You want to attract the, I want to get the attention of uh, your faculties, your students, right? You want to get some new information. You can browse through a lot of anatomy journals. Every subject, it's not just anatomy, physio, biochem, every clinical subject, paraclinical subject, there are a lot of journals, journals, okay? These journals will give you an update about the topic that you wish to, okay? For example, something like you want to know about the superior mesenteric artery, its variations or something, you can just Google the recent articles on that, you can just go through it. So I've just put images of the few journals and... I've just taken one uh, from surgical, surgical and radiological anatomy, one nice journal. I've just taken their recent edition, uh, their recent volume, few topics, just to give you an understanding. Are 3D printed anatomical models of the year effective for teaching anatomy? Okay, so this 3D printing is now a, a new trend in our medical profession. Okay, and now we might, most of you might be doing an abdomen. So here... Anatomy of the pudental nerve in clinically important areas, a pictorial essay and narrative review, variations in the cystic duct frequency and the relationship among insertion sites and heights on the bile duct. So these informations are going to be very useful for the clinical people, okay, because they are going to treat the live patients and for individual to individual there are going to be variations, isn't it? Okay, so journals, yes, you can add it to your reading list. So that to read anatomy we saw. Now how to read anatomy? Is it that very difficult? You might have read anatomy for your internal assessment. Upper limb, lower limb, thorax, abdomen is over, right? So what is the difficulty you face while reading anatomy? So it depends upon the individual. So students as such can be categorized into high performers. Okay, average performers and low performers. But remember, this is not constant. A high performer can always shift down. Okay, someone going down in the graph. And a low performer, if going to put some consistency, hard work and dedication, can come here, isn't it? Okay, so it is a shiftable thing. It's not a constant one. Okay, and uh, yeah, it all depends upon your attitude and the effort and the interest that you show in improving okay so it all counts now general speaking okay so these are the topics you know in anatomy when i tell gross anatomy it, it includes the regional anatomy upper limb lower limb thorax abdomen head and neck neuroanatomy embryology histology osteology surface marking ospi charts radiology so everything is needed right okay now starting with your average speaking like everyone are equally capable potential. Otherwise, you wouldn't have landed in such a medical profession, isn't it? So basically, you are capable. You have the potential to read. What is preventing you from reading? 
okay you become very tense stressed out close to the internals okay for example today is feb 18th they tell you feb 28th is your next ia on a next ia 28th okay you just plan you get tense uh, to, you, you take your textbooks only around 25th or something you don't put a timetable starting from the date of announcement you don't read daily isn't it so for those you have you should have a self interest self motivation so what is that which is okay you are you are not happy with your performance try to question yourself why aren't you happy what is preventing you to perform well is it related to your mental health are you disturbed are you depressed something stressing you or is it related to your physical health you are not okay you are falling sick repeatedly okay you are not you are not feeling well okay something is disturbing your health issues or lack of interest which is very dangerous okay once you lose interest my god it's going to be very difficult okay so you should always your peer group you should choose your peer group who are like motivating you okay so be very much careful whom you mingle with whom you choose to be with okay so then your laziness yeah postponing things i learn tomorrow tomorrow day after tomorrow i have 10 days i have 7 days okay and then you'll be like i have only just 2 days left okay your laziness so what so you have a question yes i am not performing well now i have put the questions for you why is it due to your mental health mental issues health issues or your physical health issues or lack of interest okay think of your peer group whom you are staying with who is influencing you or laziness right okay now how are we going to tune ourselves to learn you want to pass your internal okay now your abdomen internal is going to come next month you are planning to pass you have not passed in upper limb you are not passed in lower limb you are not passed in thorax you want to pass an abdomen you should have that urge to pass that is very important right i definitely have to pass you should have that urge to pass second thing once you get that urge okay uh, like usually close to the ia people come around asking ma'am what is the important topic what is the important topic why don't you ask it at the beginning of the region itself okay so once you have entered abdomen you can find out the important questions and circle it and keep right okay so you just know the important questions i had not close to your internal assessment okay so just keep reading it again and again it will be discussed in your dissection it will be discussed in your lecture any doubt you can ask though in concentrate on the important topic okay which has been asked repeatedly in your university exams and diagrams are very important guys okay diagrams are going to be extremely important why because uh, your 10 mark or 5 mark a 5 mark you imagine of the 5 marks Two to two and a half marks can be given for the diagram, especially in your histology. Four marks is for your diagram. Three to four marks is for your diagram. Okay, so diagram practice diagrams. Diagrams I'll just give you few cues, tips. When you practice diagram, make sure when you draw it, don't make it too big. the size of the diagram is going to be important imagine you have a a4 sheet with you it's not that you have to draw a full page or even half page is not or one small diagram is enough the size of the diagram if you are going to make big it's going to consume a lot of time isn't it to fill that circle so make it a moderate size second thing colors colors you need not use multiple colors anatomy you know the artery has to be red the vein has to be blue the nerve has to be yellow uh, a green for your lymphatics or ligament lymphatics right something so you can make a pencil diagram these can be shown in colors okay yeah and then labeling is very 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 important and another thing the diagram should be anatomically correct that is very important okay because the diagram will clearly you have written two pages you have drawn one single diagram you have written two pages correctly but one that single diagram is going to be wrong it is going to give a very wrong impression on the for the examiner okay so the diagram will convey whatever you have learned whether you have depicted in the manner you have produced the diagram is very very important so it can give the impression to the examiner whether you know the topic or whether you don't know the topic ignorant about the topic 
okay and yes if you feel you forget keep reading again and again and again okay you try to write it and see recollect it revise it you the best way to remember is by teaching others your roommate your dissection table mate get hold of them and teach them right and as i told you this self motivation okay today ma'am is talking you'll decide from tomorrow morning i'll read you see okay someone keeps motivating you throughout but this type of motivation will not help you at all the motivation come from should come from within self motivation is the only one that can help you throughout right okay and once motivated your consistency the difference between the person who comes first second and third okay the difference is consistency consistency is like really you plan to like you plan for a weight reduction okay you plan to go for a gym you enroll into a gym for next month yeah you try to go for the first day second day third day and then you give uh, you become a bit lazy you don't go at the end of 30 days will you get the desired result you will not but if you if somehow you manage to go for all the 30 days definitely you'll be losing some kgs isn't it yeah so that is what consistency matters you can read daily you can read daily all the three subjects why not your college gets over by 5 o'clock your sports till 7 8 or something even after that 8 or 9 you manage some 2 to 3 hours for learning you can sleep at 11 12 right yeah you become fresh only after 11 o'clock you people stay like you people are all right from 11 to 4 you keep you are awake you sleep at 4 o'clock get up at 8 o'clock and run okay your sleep hygiene is very important so consistency self motivation consistency will work out miracles unimaginable results will be given okay try it try it as i told you embryology and histology should be given equal importance from day 1 and not at the end how much ever pogila ma'am is going to motivate you finally you will be like following whatever your senior tells your senior will come and tell day histology embryo histology embryology la kadesi nimsham paathikala paathagradhukku alla thevaiye kadaiyadu please 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 we know how your senior learned and how we try to push him out to get a pass right okay so please listen embryology histology are equally important do not keep them apart try to read it give them time even in internal assessment if you ask a embryo histology question we can see that most of the students are not answering but the student who answers it will be topping the table just see in your own table dissection table the student who manages to answer that embryology or histology question in the internal assessment will be the topper of the table and one scenario i'll tell you like uh, like towards in the uh, close to the university exam one student fell very sick okay and when that student came to me i just told that person if you are able to manage to sit for the exam definitely you will pass right yeah close to the exam that per that student became very sick and she managed and uh, that person that student appeared for all the exams and the student passed in all the exams with good marks why did i give her that confidence if you sit for the exam you will pass because that person was a daily reader a daily reader right yes a person yeah suppose you plan to study everything close towards your university exam and unfortunately that student is going to fall sick yeah it's going to be a chaos okay so don't postpone things don't keep everything to the end manage to read daily manage to read all the three subjects daily okay don't keep portions pending 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 even if you try to start from today as day one you can okay and one important and interesting thing like i would like to tell you yes when you study you know how you should study like uh, for example uh, you are reading about um, Mm, yeah, a brachial plexus or something. Okay, you're reading about brachial plexus. You're studying about that. When you study itself, you should study like an examiner. If you're going to put a question on brachial plexus, a tough question. What are the tough questions would you like to put on brachial plexus? 
Okay. Imagine you're sweating a question paper on brachial plexus. What are the tough questions you would like to put? For example, I would like to put, what are the supraclavicular branches of the brachial plexus? Right? And what is the root value of long thoracic nerve? Everyone will tell C5, C6, C7. If I ask you, what is the root value of thoracodorsal nerve? Yeah. Yes, you can answer me. What is the root value of thoracodorsal nerve? It's easy, actually. Thoracodorsal nerve is the only one with the root value 6, 7, 8. But still, most of us will forget it. Okay? So, when you try to read a subject from an examiner point of view, when you read it for the first time, you will try to understand the topic. Right? When you read it for the second time, you will try to recollect, remember, revise. When you read it for the third time, imagine you are an examiner setting question on that. When you do like that, you will not miss anything. Even the toughest point, the difficult one, the hardest thing, something which is different will be highlighted when you see that. Okay, So change the perspective into which from which you read a topic. But still then, some different question will come in your question paper. But then also be cool. It's going to be different not only for you, but for everyone, right? Okay, so no worries. So we saw that to read from, how to read. Now, how to remember anatomy? Yes, I do accept anatomy is a very volatile subject. Though I have been teaching anatomy, yeah, since 2008. As a non-PG, postgraduate, AP. Yes, I've been teaching anatomy since then, 2008. Even if some uh, topic is given tomorrow for me to teach, I would like to flip through the pages and see whether I'm right, isn't it? So anat I accept anatomy is a very volatile subject. How am I going to remember it? That also differs from individual to individual. There are different types of learners. Yes, some people will have a visual memory. What you see in dissection, what you see in atlas, what you see in the PowerPoint projected by your faculties will be saved long in your gray matter. Some people, they would like to listen. Yeah, whatever they hear, that stands long. Some would like to write, 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 write so that they remember. Some would like to do a demo or teach others. Okay, and they try to remember. So you should yourself figure out what type of learner you are. What, what type of learning will help you to remember things better. Okay. And luckily, anatomy, you have images, a lot of uh, uh, 3D videos are there, virtual anatomy videos are there. You have atlases. So many things are helpful to remember your anatomy. Right. And the best thing that I would suggest is uh, you might have a soft copy of the book in your laptop, in your mobile, but just take your books and read. OK, all that soft copy is very much volatile. When you get the book in your hand, when you flip through the pages, when you underline it, when you mark it, when you read from it, recollect from it. OK, that's going to be of very use. So hard copy, I would really, really, really suggest strongly read from your textbooks. When you read a topic for the first time, you're trying to read it, which has been taught in your lecture, which has been covered in dissection. You might get a doubt. So whenever you get a doubt, try to find out the answer from your faculty, from your friends. Okay, try to die a doubt. If you don't have a doubt and when you read it for the second time, try to recollect it. Okay, just sit silently, try to recollect it. Write it. And if you think you're not able to remember, many people ask, many of the queries, not able to remember, not able to remember. There are many, like, perform, uh, like many type of people, right? Some are very smart. If they give one read, it will be in their memory. I'm not that type, okay? I'll read twice or thrice. So if I read twice or thrice, I might remember. So you try to read as much as times till you remember. At least those important topics, yes, Rector sheath, inguinal canal, everything like, uh, yeah, celiac trunk, duodenum, relations, all that. So, read those topics till you remember. Revise it, recollect it. Still, if you're finding it, uh, yeah, certain things, for example, uh, I was telling recently, on the abdominal planes, if you want to remember. Okay, just for an example. Uh, we know that the formation of IVC is at the level of L5. 
the bifurcation of the iota is at l4 the origin of inferior mesenteric artery is l3 the origin of superior mesenteric artery is l1 right so what is the plane that corresponds to the formation of ivc transtubercular plane what is the plane that corresponds to the bifurcation of the abdominal aorta l4 passing through l4 the highest point of the iliac crest the supracrestal plane what is the plane passing through the origin of the inferior mesenteric artery subcostal plane l3 what is the plane passing through the origin of superior mesenteric artery transpyloric plane l1 so certain things which you remember which you find it difficult to remember you can put it as a note and stick it somewhere in your field of vision wherever in your room in your room cupboard or somewhere on the wall where you get to see it frequently right you would have done it for your neat ug preparations and as i told you in your dissection table you can teach your friends there or your roommates yes as soon you'll be getting your juniors right or you we can combine with your seniors so teach others the more and more you teach others definitely you're going to remember it best teaching others is the best method of remembering things and yeah tables i put few tables i'll help you with that and schematic diagrams it may, it may not be anatomically correct but you see the diagrams you should be able to understand which will help you to recollect mnemonics yes all of us there are eight carpal bones right here over the uh, uh, forming the under the flexor retinaculum yes yes all of us universally we know the mnemonic she looks too pretty try to catch her even if you are 90 years old you will not be forgetting it right the mnemonic for the carpal bones so certain mnemonics are like very uh, very very easy and uh, important i can teach you one uh, what are the coverings of testis yes so it was not framed by me while i was doing pg one of my colleague taught some damn english man called it testes okay so this is for skin d d is for dark toes muscle e is for the external spermatic fascia c is for the cremaster muscle i is for the internal spermatic fascia t is for the tunica vaginalis tunica albuginea tunica vasculosa this is not only important for your anatomy point of view when you go to surgery there are a lot of clinical conditions related to scrotum hydrocele varicoceles hernia everything a complete uh, directing one hernia all that so the, you have to make an incision through the scrotum for which you have to know the layers of the scrotum okay so the so mnemonics will be of much helpful and when you discuss things when you make a mistake someone is going to correct you you will remember it better okay so some topic which you feel fee which you feel very uh, difficult or something discuss it discuss with your friends your peer group or even with the faculty or with your mentor your tutor brainstorming yes uh, it's it's going to be of very much help to remember things and if you get any feedback yes corrective feedback constructive feedback accept it and go ahead okay so yes these things will help you remember anatomy okay okay as i told you read it from your textbook try to recollect it especially those important topics which are definitely going to appear in your university exam question paper read it once twice thrice or anything teach others make comparative tables i'll be talking about it soon sticky notes you can put it wherever you see it your schematic diagrams mnemonics discuss correct it okay and one thing definitely you have to know now the new trend is all about conceptual anatomy concept 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 okay for example all about axillary nerve you know everything about axillary nerve right you know what is the other name for axillary nerve it's called the circumflex nerve what is its root value c5 c6 which cord of the brachial plexus it comes from posterior cord what is its relation to the humerus it runs on the posterior aspect of the surgical neck of humerus what is the intermuscular space it's related to it's related to the quadrangular space 
what is the structure accompanying it posterior circumflex humeral vessel what are the muscles supplied by it it supplies the deltoid which is an abductor right the middle fibers are abductor it supplies the teres minor which is a rotator of the arm rotator lateral rotator of the humerus it gives the upper lateral cutaneous nerve of arm right if the sensation is lost in that area it's called the regimental badge of anesthesia what is the mode of injury fracture to the surgical neck or any intramuscular injection given into the deltoid at the wrong place can accidentally injure the nerve we know that the axillary nerve obeys the hilton's law which states that the nerve that supplies the joint also supplies the muscle acting on the joint and the nerve supplying the joint okay skin over the joint so what will happen if there's injury to long uh, axillary nerve deltoid whenever you try to abduct your shoulder it's going to be painful not able to abduct right so you try to not uh, you don't use the deltoid it goes for atrophy the round contour of the shoulder is because of the deltoid so if you don't use the deltoid it atrophies the greater tubercle becomes prominent you get a square tip shoulder and as i told you loss of sensation of the upper lateral part of the arm so this is and this nerve it ends as a uh the nerve to teres minor it ends as a pseudo ganglia so this is all you have to know about axillary nerve isn't it everything about the axillary nerve now once you know everything about the axillary nerve you can get a clinical case scenario you will be definitely able to answer it right it can be a image based question of course you can answer it it can be like a sort of a complicated question all are true except it can be with multiple option questions yes it can be a video based question so whatever type for the question is put okay whatever format the question is put but you know everything about the axillary nerve you will be definitely able to answer it that's what i'm telling you whether it's your neat pg entrance exam whether it's your inict or next one next two usmle plab anything right the topic of interest is going to be the same the important question is going to be the same okay so 360 degree about that topic you're supposed to learn so whatever format the question is put in your university exam or ia or mcq or essay or five mark uh, multiple choice question clinical scenario image based video based definitely you'll be able to answer it okay guys yeah next yes university exams that is what make you like a worried right stress yes so expecting your exams to be in july as m n m c has given right july or august uh, and your study holidays in june hardly how many months you have in your hand now we are in feb feb is getting over march april may three months you have to finish the entire anatomy in college and then you have to revise it you have to remember it not only anatomy physio biochem everything right yes you can all your seniors have done it so definitely you can just you have to do some smart work isn't it you have to manage time you should have the urge to pass or score more you have to concentrate right you should get the fear fear is good your university exam is coming you have to concentrate on that so you should be oh, focused you should plan a smart work you should be dedicated you should be true to yourself you should be consistent definitely you can okay you can manage time so medicine ragu and team and myself are here with you to help for your university exams mentoring we are ready to do even one to one mentoring and close to the university exam we are even planning for rapid revision series a crash course sort of thing so keep following us on medicine right we are really that to help you out so you need you think you you may not you you may not you are not the only person sailing on that ship right we are here to help you we'll be guiding you safely need not worry so no worries right so all the stress yeah fear has to be there but make it little stressless okay yeah because you know like uh, uh, in the university exams like anatomy university exam has been happening through years they've been asking all the questions so if you take last 10 year questions 
and you start revising them your question paper at least 90% will be similar right they are not going to ask you something out of the way what they've asked over the 10 years most of it is going to get repeated yes so you may once you make up your mind to pass to get score well okay so find out the previous year question revise it now i'll just give you one one example okay uh, you have your head and neck for paper 2 they have started head and neck in your college so they might take two months to finish head and neck okay one and a half to two months okay and uh, now before your exam how many hours you need yes you are understanding my question how many hours you need to finish head and neck the day before your exam okay imagine tomorrow morning is your head and neck paper two Today you have come, you have written, you have a half a day leave or one day leave. You want to finish the entire head and neck in how many hours? That's what I'm asking. You might hardly have five to six hours because you need to finish neuroanatomy. You need to finish thorax also, right? You need to sleep. You need to eat, right? So you might have hardly four to six hours to finish your head and neck the day before your university exam for a quick revision. Okay. So plan for that. You make a monthly planner, a weekly planner, and one day planner. So start with this one day planner. I need five to six hours the day before my exam to finish head and neck. So how many weeks I need during my study holidays? During your study holidays, you can put two to three revision tables if you have enough time. Okay. So for your first revision for head and neck, you can plan three weeks. Uh, okay, three weeks. Then for your second revision, you can plan one week for it. And for you during a third revision, you can just put two days for it. Do you understand the concept? So take it retrograde. Just before the university exam, how many hours you need for upper limb, lower limb, thorax, abdomen, head and neck, neuroanatomy? First point. During your study holidays, how much you're planning to put for each topic? How many weeks? How many days? At least three revisions, you have to put three timetables. The first timetable can be a bit liberal. The second one, moderate. And the third revision table, it should be in days. Okay? Plan the same for your physiology and biochemistry also. We were talking about mnemonic and then I told about tables, right? Yes, guys, these tables are going to be extremely useful. It might take some time to make a comparative table. But just before your exams, it will help you to... Revise a large amount of data within a short time span. For example, recently I was uh, telling my postgraduate student, final year postgraduate student, uh, like to make a comparative table for all the 12 cranial nerves. I gave her the side headings and yes, she of course she made it and came with two, three, four pages. I told her we'll revise daily. Okay. So these tables, the comparative tables might take some time to write, but uh, it is going to be of extremely useful. Okay. I'll give you now one example um, in abdomen itself. So we have three important muscles, right? Uh, three small muscles, dart toes, cremaster, pyramidalis. I'm sure all of you will be knowing it, right? Now, location. Where do you want to put the location of dart toes? So, it is the subcutaneous muscle of the scrotum. Where do you see uh, cremaster muscle? Around the spermatic cord. Where do you see pyramidalis? Within the rectus sheath. Now, what type of muscle are they? The dart toes is a smooth muscle. Cremaster is a skeletal muscle. Pyramidalis again, a skeletal muscle. What is the nerve supply to these? Tartos is going to be supplied by the sympathetic. Cremaster, content of spermatic cord, right? Genital branch of gentofemoral nerve. Pyramidalis is again supplied by the subcostal nerve. Now, what is the action of these muscles? Dartos, the contraction of that is going to help in thermoregulation. Gives a corrugated appearance of the scrotum. Cremaster, what will happen? Cremastic reflex. It will pull the spermatic cord upward, right? And occlude the superficial inguinal ring, a ball valve mechanism, a defense mechanism for the inguinal canal. And pyramidalis, they call it the tensor of linea alba. Now, any of your UG textbooks, will you, found, will you find uh, this entire data in one page? No. It will be given in different pages. But if you 
find time to make out this comparative table and a lot of MCQs are here, right? Okay, so you can write it and keep and just before your abdomen IA or university uh, exam, you flip it back and see definitely one MCQ or one or two MCQ for your viva something might appear from it. Okay, so to, to turn these pages and to make this table, it might take 10 to 15 minutes. But when you flip before your exam, it just hardly takes one to two minutes to revise. Imagine it's saving time, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that's about your university exam. Yeah, I asked you to prepare your, uh, read about, we are here to help. We are planning for crash courses. And I told you like, uh, go through the important topics for the past 10 years, make a retrograde timetable, okay? Three revision tables. Comparative tables, mnemonic, everything. And uh, coming to your paper presentation, finally, that is what important. Uh, you might, uh, if you're inviting a guest to your house for a dinner. You might cook at your home. You can might you might buy it from a nearby shop, a five star hotel, or nearby a roadside hotel or something. Okay, but the way you present it should tempt your guest to sit and dine, right? It should stimulate salivation, isn't it? Isn't the dinner table presentation. That is what you're finally going to give in your theory paper. All the hard work you've put for the past one year. In just the three hours you're going to give in that, in like 80 to 100 pages, you're going to give it in the hand of the examiner to decide your future. So how presentable should it be? The very first thing I would advise you is time management. Very, very, very important. For a 15 mark essay, manage around 30 to 40 minutes. For a short note, 8 to 10 minutes is more than enough. And more important, please attempt all questions. Please attempt all questions. All your MCQs on time. Right? And your presentation, answer to the point. Because for your internal assessment, you'll be writing in your theory, uh, you'll be writing in sheets, A4 sheets or in a note. So when your faculty is correcting it, like the number of pages they turn will be like coming into a play, a role of mark, okay? But for your university exam, all your answer sheet is going to be scanned and uploaded. So the examiner has to correct it from the screen. It is a tedious job. Imagine sitting in front of a screen and you turn so many pages to complete one essay. So the number of pages doesn't matter for your university exam. What matters is your content and how you present it. How you present your content in university exam matters. Okay, you need not use multiple colors. One, two colors, one light or dark colors, it's more than enough. Don't use three to four colors. Okay, two, two colors is more than enough. And try to give it as points. Okay, a flow chart, a point or something. And as I told you, diagrams don't make it very huge. You might not have get time to complete the diagram. So diagram of moderate size with minimal colors, anatomically correct. Right, so time management, attend all the questions, all the MCQs on, on time. Okay, answer to the point, number of pages doesn't matter, the content matters, the presentation of your content. Okay, neat, legible, spaced out, wherever necessary, flow chart, highlighted with two colors, a moderate size diagram, enough. Okay, you'll get high marks. Yes, that's all about your what to read, how to read, how to remember, how to prepare for your university exams. And one word about the research. The correct, uh, definitely, uh, you can do some research work in your undergraduate period. The best time to start your research work, I personally feel, is first clinical and not earlier than that. Because while you're in your first year, like so many things are new to you. You're entering a new professional course, you're entering a new campus, your hostel life, adapting to your internal assessment. So many things are there, right? So your first year, you, if you're really interested, you have guidance, you have some help, you're at leisure, you can plan. But first clinical, there are like pharmacology, community medicine, many research is going on. ICMR and from a student only, I came to know IISC, Indian Institute of Science. 
right there are many students even uh, yeah that one thing is not that i put actually two things okay many students throughout india they are enrolling into research projects in I icmr iisc you can go into their website and check plan it definitely in your ug period but better to start in your first clinical right and yes of course like you people are feeling very stressed out because you're always putting your book into the your head into the books just lift your head out of the book and rotate one 360 degree and see in your college campus in your hostel other than academic activities so many things are going around to enjoy to make your college life more memorable okay the quiz, the CME workshops, whatever comes, just enroll into it. Whether it can be an intra-college, inter-college, a state level, national level, an online quiz or anything, just enroll in it. Okay? It's not about winning or losing. It's just about participating. Okay? Uh, like uh, you're participating in an a inter-college quiz. Okay? You form a team with the uh, like-minded people. Like-minded people, you form a team. It can be your senior, your junior. You can combine, form a team. You plan something. You read together. You brainstorm together. You travel. You travel together. You go to a new place. You get exposed. You're exposed to a lot of uh, that new infrastructure, new faculties. You come across participants from other colleges. You get exposed to the type of questions, the pattern of questions. It, you learn a lot. You learn a lot, lot, lot just by participating. Definitely, you should. these uh, learning experiences will not be given in any of the textbooks. It's all very just unique. Okay, your participation is very important. It is essential. Any okay, you need not worry about losing, winning. It's not that. Okay, we learn a lot, lot, lot just by participation. And once you win in that quiz of first or second unexpected win, it's going to be a very memorable, a happy, it will boost your confidence levels. Okay, I think MGR University during the convocation also they keep a lot of uh, competitions. It's all a sort of encouragement to you. Okay, it will help you see the different perspectives of your, uh, your profession, your academics, right? Yeah. So a college a students from our college, like different years, we have participated in different quiz, even national level quizzes. Yes. And uh, non-academic activities. Yes. I told you soon after college, you have some sports activity. Okay. After your sports, after your dinner, you can take your book. But close to internal, just keep focusing on your studies. Okay. So these non-academic activities in your school life, you might be a good dancer, a singer, a sports player or something, right? So these, these things also participate in your college. Do not hesitate. One thing that I would like you to that I would like to advise is please throw off this attitude. What others will think of me? Just be yourself. Just be yourself. What others will think of me attitude. Just throw it off your shoulders. Try to be yourself. Okay. That itself will take you to unreachable heights. Enjoy your college life. It's not just studies alone. It's going to carry good memories for your lifelong. So participate in cultural activities. Participate in sports. The quiz club. If you don't have a quiz club in your college, you can start a quiz club, academic club. Be part of some club. Blood Donors Club, uh, uh, Tamil Mandram is there. We have Tulur, so many things, uh, acad no, academic and non-academic clubs are there. When you're participant of some, when you're participant, when you belong to some club, that sense of belonging, that sense of belonging itself will, itself will be a uh, stress buster for you. Okay, it will help to ease out your tension, that sense of belonging. I'm part of this. I'm part of this. Okay, that itself will be a very much helpful to you. Yeah. And of course, I would like to, like in my college, I'm of course an anatomy assistant professor, but still I would like to, out of the way, I try to go and coordinate student activities. I'll be like once, even they pass out of the first year, I'll be in contact with the batch reps. Okay, so I'll be traveling with them throughout, even if they are CRRI, they'll be in my contact list. Okay, so these leadership roles, which I mean like uh, you're the batch rep or you're the team leader of your club or hostel, you're the batch rep, mess rep or something. 
do not hesitate to take a leadership role of course any leader any leader even the prime minister is going to face lot of criticism right okay so a leader will definitely face a criticism okay but that's what i told you what others will think of me throw off that attitude so leadership role will help you learn a lot it will give you a lot of patience accepting criticism um, a good listener how you plan logistics you will learn so many things that no one else can teach and most importantly you your contact circle will widen you will come across like minded people okay so do not hesitate to accept leadership roles yes your health do not neglect it now you are in the peak of your health you are young people right young vibrant energetic people yes but make sure you are in the same pink of health towards your university exam also towards your internal assessment also right so hydration is very 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 important some of you might be in uh, uh, ac classrooms you do you might not know how much of water you drink hydration plays a vital role you want to remember things right but your physical health plays a important role to remember yes do not skip your breakfast standing in the dissection hall for one and a half or two hours without a breakfast is not going to help you at all make sure you have your breakfast and especially close towards your exams avoid junk foods oily food oily foods which might uh, uh, dampen your okay dull your breath, mood or brain okay done and have it at the right time you all know about the insulin secretions ga hcl secretion everything right your physiology so try to have food at the appropriate time and don't uh, like uh, your late night dinners if you could have an early dinner before 6 pm by 7 pm it's well and good okay that will be a lifelong habit okay so do not eat late yes i wanted to put a separate slide for this yeah sleep hygiene sleep hygiene most of us do not have it including me i am i i make up my mind okay 11 o'clock i should sleep and 4 o'clock i get up early in the morning yeah i i decide i try to but i fail most of the times so i feel like i don't know how myself to advise you the same thing which i'm trying struggling hard to follow sleep hygiene is very important okay 5 to 6 hours per day a good sleep a sound sleep will set, will your hormones will be under your control you, your self control is there everything your body is in a good shape a good health okay and uh, screen time okay try to keep your mobile one hour before your sleep that's what they tell okay no you can just 10 o'clock you can put your mobile off far away that's a good thing unless your mobile calls do not go to it yes you have a call you have a message notification go and take that mobile just because you don't know how to while away your time don't be scrolling your insta pages or whatsapp something yeah twitter is okay so yes mm, your sleep hygiene your screen time is of very important coming to mental health all of us all of us at every phase in our life go into a dip and then come back okay so it's not just you and me everyone every human being at every phase of your life even as a child as a teen as a parent as a grandparent or something some role they would have gone into a wave of depression and then come come back okay so it's really okay to not feel okay okay yeah the issue could be different for different people it could be a family problem a financial problem a problem in the friend circle peer group or it can be a senior some of you have texted about dragging or it can be something unpleasant with your higher authorities in the hostel or in the uh, department subject or it can be a social media addiction you only know what the problem is so once you think you're not okay try to reason out what is this causing me not to be okay okay and you find out that reason a particular reason a specific reason and you want to come out of it decide to come out of it seek help right 
definitely talk to a person whom you can confide, whom you can trust. Your roommate can be close to you physically, but may not be of your wavelength. Okay? So whom you confide your personal problems is very important. Be very careful whom you share your personal grievances. Okay? Even medicine and myself are always available for you. Any sort of help you can come to us. We might help you or we might try to guide you whom to seek. Okay? So we are available for you. Reach us. Okay? So some might be on the top of the ladder already. Some might be halfway through. Some might be have reached halfway and then trying to fall down. Okay. So please remember, yeah, all of us are climb. Anybody, no one is like, no, like the person on the top already started from the first step. He didn't directly jump onto the final step, right? You have to to put your foot on the first, second, third, and then you can go top. It's a stepwise thing. Okay. So, need not worry. All your way, all your way, medicine is that to help. We are there. So, it's not just about pass, fail. I really want each one of you to score high. Text us back. Ma'am, we have like we have got a distinction or honors. Yes. Medicine is not only helping with your UG preparation, with your PG preparation also. Okay, so we'll be traveling with you throughout. You can confide on us. Yeah, as I told you, we have tried to cover all your grievances, but in case still, if you think any of your personal issue has not been addressed, but you still need help, please feel free to approach us. Okay, whatever hard work you're putting now, definitely it's going to be applauded in a bigger forum. Okay, none of your hard work is going to be waste. You're very much close to the victory. You are here because you are capable of, okay? Don't lose confidence over yourself. You can, you definitely can. We are here to mentor you, guide you, confide in us and travel with us. And of course, you can get back to us always. Thanks, Raghu, for this opportunity. Audience, yes, we are always here to help. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. It was uh, really a wonderful session. I think uh, most of them uh, had many questions in their mind when they started to come to this session. And I think uh, many of their doubts and uh, their uh, vision towards their uh, victory. That's why we call it as a trump card to success. And I think uh, that is achieved. And uh, I thank you, ma'am, once again. And as ma'am told, I would like to highlight two important things. Like... Uh, as she told, like uh, many people are like thinking just uh, medicine is uh, just a ladder, always you should read. It's not like that. See, once if you are going to read something that has to stay in your mind and that you need to be very sure that whatever you are going to read, that you are going to read it by understanding the concept. I think many people, uh, many of your seniors may also have that opinion that anatomy is just a subject that is going to be like memorized and vomit in your exam. But of course, it is not and that you will definitely understand if you are going to attend ma'am's session. Uh, it's not just ma'am's ses ma sessions on anatomy that is like a very interesting. If you are going to go back and uh, see the breaking up your mental health, it was one of the sessions conducted by ma'am. And that was actually really opening every single topic of discussion, uh, including your uh, personal relationship. You, you might have uh, now entered a college atmosphere and many of you are like, uh, starting to have some uh, a relationship and how to handle that relationship along with your academic and how to not get deviated from your uh, vision towards your victory in your uh, exams. So that is the ultimate aim and that everything is covered by ma'am and we will be like open to uh, your uh, queries open to your uh, discussions and every time in the group that's why we have created three groups and many times it extends to five to six groups also for your seniors so never mind you just okay, even if it is a silliest doubt don't worry you just put it in the group and we have a great number of uh, mentors in our group to guide you all and I once again thank you, ma'am, for joining with us. And uh, of course, I can tell, I uh, I can assure you that she will be always there for you to guide gu guide you all. Need not be a uh, uh, need not be a student of her in her own college, but wherever you are, where uh, at whatever uh, time, if you are when you are going to be st disturbed or stressed, she will be there to guide you. And I can assure you that. Thank you, ma'am, once again. Thank you so much. And it was a really a wonderful session and a wonderful start for this year. 
also and i hope uh, you will be there to guide them uh, till their university exams and far beyond till their internship and for pg thank you so much ma'am once again definitely ragu thank you all thanks for the opportunity